Welcome to Santarago Surplus. We're going to start getting this SKS rifle ready. First thing we've got to do is clean off the Cosmoline, and then we're going to start test fitting parts and doing a head spacing. The good news is, this is the Chinese Cosmoline, and we, we call it Dragon Snot, and it's not the Yugoslavian stuff that turns into this hard, packed, impossible to remove crap. So, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. WD-40 does a really good job of loosening it up so you can scrub with an old toothbrush get a rag into it. It's like an ocean of Cosmoline. This is probably among the more boring things you could watch in your life, so we're going to fast forward from here. So it's mostly cleaned off right now. It's Cosmoline, so you're going to be getting it out with a rag every time you clean the rifle for the next, you know, five, eight years. This magazine goes right here, and this is a little tight. So this is our first part. They're often a little bit tight on the Russian or on the Chinese models, and they just need a little bit of extra pressure to go in. However, this one is definitely a little bit out of spec. Off of camera, I went ahead and tried to do some work with some other um, magazines and other SKSs to see exactly how tight. And I believe that this, um, pretty sure it's a Romanian magazine, is actually just a little bit longer here and it's a little bit rounded here. So we're gonna get it in. This has a slightly different shape and these could be pinned just a tiny hair off and make it a little bit tight. So we'll see. And there you go. It is a tight fit, but it is a workable fit. That is the first part we're going to add on. There are a couple things we are not doing on this receiver barreled receiver. We're not populating the barrel on this build. Um, we will do that at a different point in time. I'll go ahead and take one apart and redo it. Magazine's on. Let's move to the next step. So go ahead and open up our collection of parts. This is all stuff that I have collected over time. This is actually from an old gun show and this is a certified professionally packaged kit double counted from Federal Ordinance of South El Monte, California. And uh, has a bunch of parts in it. It's just the SKS replacement parts kit. In this case, all we're worried about is the recoil sp spring assembly with the guide rod, the spring, and the keepers are in here. There's still an extractor and an extractor spring in the uh, package that I haven't used yet. We have a cheese grater heat shield, which I figure we can use since the stock that we're using comes up over the top, comes up this high, but doesn't have a top. <clears throat> we have a milled trigger group, which is uh, probably going to work out okay, but it's kind of interesting because this is definitely a later period SKS model. We have the bolt carrier, which matches the bolt. However, this is a Russian bolt and carrier, so we'll have to do the headspace. Uh, piston, this is a U.S. piston, yay, and we have this, the uh, <clears throat> gas piston tube, we have the extension and spring still in the package. Before we get too involved in the top, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our trigger group fits. And here we have our trigger group. One thing you really want to do is remember to cock it and put the safety on, okay? Slide it into its groove here. That's just easier to do. Okay, so that fit in just fine. Next step is the bolt and carrier. That's a very stiff spring right there. Drop the magazine so that your bolt hold open lever is not activated. That works just fine. Notice that we have not checked headspace yet, okay? This is not headspace checked at all.
So far that looks pretty good. I depressed the bolt hold open. Now I'm going to hold that back. I'm making sure the disconnector is good on this trigger group, and it's fine. We should start with the extension. And we're going to take all this back apart and do all of our lubrication cleaning and, and uh, tweaking later. Anywhere you file or make any adjustments, you're going to want to blue or re-black it anyway. So here is our extension. This is a uh, I'm not sure what the model of this extension, the manufacturer of this extension is. It's not the coiled spring or the uh, woven spring that I'm used to. Just a single spring. What we'll do is we'll get it, get a pin to get it in there a little extra. Whoops, not quite far enough. There. Now with this depressed a little bit, it's held in. No problems at all. Please excuse the noises. Once again, we uh, have a new batch of puppies as I'm filming this, and the whelping box is here in the shop. Piston moves freely. This gas tube is going to have to be re-blued completely if I want to match it all. And that's on. Uh, we'll go through a separate process to install the cheese grater. This is an unused recoil spring. If you're familiar with AKs, you're going to be familiar with how this works. So here we are with the parts for the recoil spring assembly. This is an assembled one I pulled off of another <coughs> SKS. This part, and again, you're familiar with this if you're familiar with AKs, captures the spring on here. and it sits inside this. This is a brand new piece from an import lot from the 80s or 90s, so it's a little bit if different, and you'll notice right away that we have a problem. It's not gonna fit and slide <clears throat> the way it's supposed to into here and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. This is, no this is normal with uh, mishmash parts. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and turn it down just a little bit just have to make sure it doesn't get too small, and I'll be right back. So this is chucked in the baby lathe, and this lathe is actually here for me to convert to a CNC, but I mostly just use it for doing little parts like screws and stuff like this. So, spin it up. We don't actually want to use a cutter tool on this, we're just going to use a file. And, uh, excuse the awkward angle here, but I'm, I'm used to being right where the camera is. And we're not doing fine measurement work here, we're just going to work on it until it slides in. And that will be perfect, just enough. So let's take it out and... Now I don't want to take this one back apart and I left some bare metal so we're going to go ahead and blue it. I've mentioned this before in other videos, but this is uh, Brownells Dicropan T4 touch-up, and it is the best black style bluing agent for doing these touch-ups that I've ever run into. And even though you don't want to waste it, you got to use enough to really get it wet. And you can see uh, the piece is well blued now. So I'm using some WD-40 and I'm going to clean it off because you want to clean it really, really well. This is a bluing salt, so much like a corrosive primer salt. 
you really want to get it off. There we go. Now we have a rod that actually works. So we have this. Next part is the hard part. You got to get all of this spring into that length so that you can slip this on here, this way. It's going to come up this direction. There's a, there's a cone here. You don't want it facing that way. You want it facing that way. And that's it. To take it apart, you would do the same thing and get it all the way down and pull this off. And then you could replace your recoil spring for a fresh one if you needed to. Go ahead and put this in here. We're going to go ahead and mess with the dust cover some as we do this project, so I'm going to take these screws off and actually dismount the whole scope mount rail assembly. This isn't too bad. It's not really an awful mount, I guess. <clears throat> I'm kind of interested in the fact that it's, uh, it's it seems a little excessively tall, honestly, for modern optics. So we'll have to see. Maybe I'll be able to make an adjustment to it and actually lower it some. I might cut off the made in China words though, and you know, Bubba loves made in China. Now we can improve our function checking. Bolt hold open. Bolt closed. I think we're going to be okay. So far so good. I don't know how clear the gas port is yet. I'm going to have to get a tool in there and make, sh make very, very sure that it's actually clean. And then we're going to have to take and do a little bit more decosmoline blew up a couple of scratched areas or areas that I filed and then we'll start working on the next step. And the next step is going to be getting the cheese grater put together. So that's it for part two of our SKS project. Everything has gone very well so far and we'll break into some more details. Please ask me if you have any special requests for specific disassembly or assembly procedures on an SKS. I do have more of the barreled receivers that we can play with. Of course, subscribe, like, share the video. So consider doing a Patreon support or a one-time donation at paypal.me. But also when this comes out, we may be getting to the point where I have a BitChute account, so check that out too just in case YouTube does a censorship run. Hopefully this is, for what it is, some relatively high quality SKS Bubba work, and you will enjoy what's going on. Have a good one.